What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. Following on from an older video when we told you guys how to invest 100 ringgit, lots of people watched it and I assume you guys enjoyed it. So today, we'll be talking about how to invest with 1000 ringgit for those of you who are slightly more advanced or have saved up more money. Cha-ching! So the first thing that you can now start investing in is to me, the most exciting one being individual stocks. Unfortunately, we don't have brokers like Robinhood in the US where people can just buy stocks with just, you know, $10 and something like that. In my opinion, having 1000 ringgit is still quite a small amount to invest in individual stocks, but it is a good starting point. You want to know how to manage a portfolio with 1000 ringgit, otherwise you won't know how to manage a portfolio with 100,000 ringgit. If you want to buy Malaysian companies, you can use Rakuten, which is a broker that I currently use for all my Malaysian stocks. Before I started all of this YouTube stuff, I remember reading an article where people are talking about the commissions charged by Malaysian brokers and because of it, they recommend starting off with an amount of at least 7,000 ringgit. At that point, I was a bit disheartened because 7,000 ringgit, let's face it, is quite a bit of money to save up for a fresh grad. While it's definitely more efficient to do so, meaning invest with at least 7,000 ringgit due to fees, I think that doing it with just 1,000 ringgit is just as fine. In fact, my first deposit to Rakuten was only 1,000 ringgit. I read the article, I decided, you know, I don't care. Yes, it is more efficient if you have more money, but I'm just going to start with 1,000 ringgit anyway. So with Rakuten, you'd be paying around 7 ringgit in fees, which is about 0.7% if you bought 1,000 ringgit worth of stocks in just one trade. Personally, even though I say yes, you can start with a lower amount, I wouldn't make trades with less than 1,000 ringgit because then the fees just start to get a bit too much. With just 1,000 ringgit, you can still buy one lot or 100 shares of companies like Maybank or TNB, which are great blue chip companies and they're both currently under 10 ringgit each. If you want to sign up with Rakuten, don't forget to use our link down in the description below. You'll get 500 Rakuten points when you do. If you want to start off with US stocks instead, you can use something like Interactive Brokers. If you're on the tiered commission structure, which everyone should be, the commission is only 35 US dollars or around 1 ringgit 50 cents, which is very, very low. Since it is actually quite a bit lower than buying Malaysian stocks, you can spread out 1000 ringgit over multiple stocks. Usually, whenever I want to make trades on interactive brokers, I will aim for a minimum of 70 US dollars per trade, and when we do that, the fees would be around 0.5%. Another good thing about interactive brokers is that they have fractional shares for US stocks, meaning you can literally buy any stock, whether it's a penny stock or a very expensive stock like Amazon. Even though Amazon is over 3000 US dollars per share, you can still invest just $100 and still get a fraction of Amazon shares. If you follow my 70 USD rule for minimum trade, then you should be able to buy around three or four stocks with 1000 ringgit. Again, if you want to use interactive brokers, you can use our link. We'll leave it down in the description below. The next investment that you can start off with with 1000 ringgit is to start investing in P2P platforms like funding societies. The website mentions that investment starts as low as 100 ringgit, but I remember when I signed up around three years ago, there was a minimum initial deposit of 1000 ringgit. I'm not sure if that's still the case now, but I do think that starting off with 1000 ringgit when investing in these P2P platforms is a better choice. This is because if you start with just 100 ringgit, you can only make one investment at any given time and it's just not worth it. With 1000 ringgit, on the other hand, you can make 10 separate investments of 100 ringgit each, and this way you can spread out your risk a little bit more. Let's say if one of the loans that you invested in were to default, at least it will only be 10% of your portfolio and you can easily recover assuming the other nine investments come through. Of course, as with all other investments, the more money you have, the easier it is to make more money. But for this case, for this particular investment, which is P2P lending, I think starting off with 1000 ringgit is a bare minimum. As I mentioned in my Funding Society's video as well, I am retesting this platform out and I did start with just 1000 ringgit. I see it as a good diversification tool with potentially higher returns, so it is a good shout if you want to invest your four figures. Moving on, having 1000 ringgit ready finally allows you to start investing in mutual funds. You can do this with Fund Supermarket as one of the main platforms to buy and sell mutual funds for both Malaysia and Singapore. Big disclaimer though, I haven't really used Fund Supermarket other than to invest my EPF money. So yeah, just keep that in mind. 
Anyway, this is because most mutual funds that you want to invest in have a minimum initial deposit of 1,000 ringgit, and then thereafter you can invest 100 ringgit, 500 ringgit, depending on them. So this is one of those investments that you literally cannot start without 1,000 ringgit. This is another potentially good investment that all of you can start exploring if you have this money. It's also something that is on my to-do list. I want to do a bit more research, not just on the platform, but on some of the mutual funds that have very high potential. So let me know down in the comments below if you want that video. Anyway, some of the larger and popular fund managers that you can invest your money with through Fund Supermark are companies like Kananga, eSpring, Afin Huang, and Principal by CIMB. There are so many different assets that you can invest your money in. You can choose equity or fixed income. You can choose local or foreign, and you can even choose Islamic or conventional. Or you can just have a mix of every single thing just using one platform. So yeah, there are a lot of choices here and they give us very good diversification for our portfolios. The more I talk about this, the more I start to wonder why I didn't do this earlier. I mean, researching it, putting my own money and making a video for you guys. So yeah, it's coming soon. Stay tuned. The final thing that you can do is of course, continue adding money into all of those investments that you've done previously that require less than 1000 ringgit. So things like crypto with Luno, robo advisors with Stashaway and Y Invest, and even Amana Saham. If you're extremely conservative for your money and 1000 ringgit is a lot to you right now, you can even start off with money market funds like Stashway Simple or Versa. Just because you have a bit of extra money doesn't mean you need to start playing with the shiny new toys. You can always go back to the simple stuff. But these investments are still great. And of course, if you have more money to pump in, it will just amplify your total returns. In fact, I will consider the previous three investments I mentioned to start this video off as a bit more advanced because you have to actually do some research, whereas these ones like Stashway, Wahid, they're all pretty good for beginners. At the end of the day, as long as you're investing more money, whichever platform you're using, then you are on the right track to financial freedom. Let us know down in the comments below which of the three new investments that you can start with 1000 ringgit is your favorite. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.